desktop mic stands. Should you buy one or build your own? We'll talk about it coming up next. These videos are made possible by the incredible people whose names are on the screen right now. Join them by becoming a channel member here on YouTube or join the crew on Patreon linked below. There's different cool rewards for both and different tiers to choose from. I'm not a huge fan of desktop mic stands, honestly. They're mostly single function tools that aren't excellent at that function, and that's annoying. There are some really good ones out there, of course, but to do it right and not have something that creaks and squeaks and drifts and sags, it costs a serious amount of money. And that's great if you've got the budget and the need that for a real big production. Up that your lungs does. Did I saw those monsters that I knew? Uh, enough of beating yourself up, enough not taking your flowers. But we're going a different way today. So many folks are using desktop mic stands now. You see them all over YouTube. Podcasting has made them extremely popular. But the issue is a lot of the ones that have come along just aren't very good. My biggest issue with them, honestly, is that there's too many points of adjustment. I don't really need a microphone to be positional in all axes every time I move it. I'd much rather have a microphone come back to a repeatable place and then get the heck out of the way. So the goal is a simple, repeatable, desk mic position and taking this approach will have tools left over if we decide we don't need this someday. These are general grip tools that you can use for mounting all sorts of other stuff. So the way this is set up is with the Manfrotto Super Clamp, that was really just for testing. They're super handy for things like this. They're not that expensive for the amount of problem solving you'll get out of owning a few of them. For this, I would buy it without the pin and save a couple dollars and then specifically buy the Kubo 5 8 inch pin that I'm showing you here. And you need the longer pin uh, for this to work rather than what comes with the Manfrotto clamps. If you're really committed to doing this, like I tested with the clamp first, and then I know this is pretty much exactly where I want to set it up, you can just grab a three inch baby wall plate like this, and uh, you can mount these to ceilings, walls, desks, whatever you want, and you can build out rigs off of them. They're really cheap, like super cheap to buy these things, and they make uh, building rigs like this very simple. The grip head I'm using is an Avenger uh, D200B, and you can certainly save some money by going with cheaper grip heads. There's tons of them out there, but these are nice and they don't cost a fortune and they're not super duper heavy. And they're made really well, even though they're not the heaviest possible one you can get. There's some really beefy grip heads out there. So take a look, see what you like. For this arm, I just cut the top section off of a straight mic stand that was discarded. There are some really cheap, like $10, 18-inch arms available online that you could just strip the plastics off of and use. Or if you have, like I did, a discarded straight stand where the base was no good anymore, and I used a hacksaw to cut it to length uh, once I figured out exactly how I wanted it. On the end of that is a 6-inch onstage black gooseneck, which, again, is just the 6-inch part's all that matters there so that it doesn't get too droopy with the larger broadcast mics. And then the final piece of this puzzle that I think is absolutely necessary for any setup, whether you're using this or one of the store-bought stands, is the right angle XLR from Neutrik. They really do clean up the whole look and they make it like really a lot easier not to have that cable poking all the way out the back. Uh, that little bit of clearance can be a big deal. So I think that's an important part and you can just buy that and wire it onto the end of any cable you've got. Just by the end, swap it onto your favorite cable and you should have a very clean desktop stand that rotates in when you need it and out of your way as soon as you're done and you don't have to think about it or touch it or lock it or do anything else you can just grab it and swing it in do your voiceover and get it out of there so what do you think about this type of setup would you improve it in any way or would you just buy something off the shelf from one of the established companies it's really handy to have this type of grip equipment around for different things for me, but if all you're ever doing is desktop mic stands, this might not be very practical. But let us know in the comments below what you're using or what you recommend or what you've put into studios. Maybe you've done some installs for folks before and you've bought some of these other options. Let us know what's worked out for you, which ones you like and which ones you would rather not have to deal with again, because even some of the expensive ones aren't perfect. Some of them honestly are just kind of repurposed, uh, computer monitor arms and they're less than ideal for audio so definitely let us know what you think about those so people can avoid paying those big dollars for something that's just not worth it in the future 
that's all for this one. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back with another one soon. Really appreciate you putting up with these kind of infrastructure videos, but it's all really important stuff when you kind of move into a new space or when somebody asks you to uh, recommend gear for a space they're setting up. So hopefully some of this stuff will be helpful about mic stands and speaker stands, and we'll get back to uh, the mixing boards and stuff that I'm working on the longer term projects here uh, very soon. I'll see you in the next one.